So right now, they're not in. It's not safe at my house. Let's put it that way. There's too much going on, and people are crazier than hell. And uh, right now, it's just not safe at my house. There's too much going on. Too many crazy people. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Today's day 41 since five-year-old Summer Wells disappeared either from her home or on the way to her home or on the road going to the home. We don't even know where she disappeared from. But we are going to deal with some of the latest news in terms of the case in this episode. It's not going to be a very long one, but we're going to look at a hidden clue in the removal of Summer's brothers, right? And that information comes via an excellent article in Times News. I'll put a link to that in the description. We're uh, reading between the lines. It's very interesting what Donald says and also what he doesn't say. It's not safe for the three boys anymore at Ben Hill Road. Why not? Don has told Times News, well, it's not safe at his house, but why not? Well, because since Summer disappeared, there are a lot of crazies skulking about, as you heard in the clip right at the beginning. Armchair detectives are roaming around as well as psychics. Really, is that why it's not safe? And so a quote from the reporters, he says, is anything else coming to your home? And Wells answers, we've had a few people come in the middle of the night. We had one. I don't think he'll be coming back to our house anymore, though. But what's missing here? Don's not saying the house isn't safe because the abductor is still out there. And isn't he? Isn't the abductor still out there? And could possibly be coming back. And I thought it was very interesting when Don spoke about the children, the boys, going down the hill. Remember, they've got to go back to school. Going down the hill and going and waiting for the bus, basically exactly where the abductor was supposed to have taken some according to what he's suggesting and now you're going to let your children go down there every day unattended as though nothing's wrong and you actually have a, an analogy to this in the in the Ramsey case and to some extent the McCann case where Burke goes back to school uh, do you need bodyguards no do you need law enforcement no in the McCann case the, they dropped off their children and every time they did at a crash at the hotel So the hotel's unsafe. It's crawling with all of these unsavory characters. But but don't worry, we're going to leave our children there anyway at the crash while we kind of go gallivanting across Europe and jogging and, and all these other things. It just isn't something that the ordinary parent would do, is it? So, you know, I don't think it's remotely likely that the abductor is still out there or could possibly be coming back. But... If you're going to dissemble, if you're going to tell stories, if you're going to um, take that particular route, it's a far better scheme to put put um, something else out there. You know, keep reinforcing the abductor narrative. And yet Don kind of forgets to do it. The new bad guy, the new boogeyman are armchair detectives and social media. I also think if there was a genuine abductor, there would, be a, there would be real measures taken immediately to protect the children either by the Wells family or by CPS or both. Law enforcement would likely have left a cruiser overnight, right? Um, another option could have been to have other family members look after them. You would have seen a change in behavior, not something as um, not, not limited to sort of just stopping drinking. You would, you would see other changes in behavior. I also want to respond to what Hawkins County Sheriff Ronnie Lawson told Times News earlier today. This is a quote from the article. He said, Social media is still causing problems with information and rumors that is not correct. There's a lot of incorrect information and a lot of advice coming from social media that's hampering the investigation with stuff we've already done many times. End quote. Um, I, I'm also dealing with a lot of rumors. In fact, the, the, the children being missing was first reported on social media. And I didn't really want to uh, go there if, if something like that wasn't really true. But it is interesting how, in some respects, social media scoops the media. And, of course, they scoop them all the time with fake news. But um, 
every now and then there is something that really is true that comes out on social media before it comes out in the media, and this is one example. Um, I've had people contact me showing me where Summer Wells is, almost as if they think Google Earth is live right now instead of footage gathered and archived from a few years ago when Google mapped the planet. I've also heard the most outlandish theories that you can imagine. So I also get um, that sort of noise in the, in the one ear of people who are shouting that, you know, it's this, it's this kind of conspiracy, look into that, whatever. Um, I do think social media is going to become a reality in true crime, more of a reality than it is even now just as the media and public relations has been, the trick is how to manage it. That is something you as the public need to do. You've got to set up your own filters. You've got to pay attention to the channels you find credible, authoritative, and authentic. When someone puts up th something that, that, that is probably fake news, you, you should be warned that, that, this is, that this is a channel that is going to do that, right? And, um, and it's... it's quite quick that you find out which channels are serious true crime channels and which ones are kind of opportunists and, and all the rest. So the social media does add another layer to the aftermath. Um, it has a good side and a dark side. And I think it's something what, that we're going to learn, have to learn to live with and manage. It's something law enforcement is going to have to learn to live with and manage. Victims have, are going to have to learn to live with and manage and um, the, uh, the whole true crime community, um, court cases, uh, law enforcement, prosecutors, defense attorneys are going to have to deal with social media in a certain way. And I think one of the obvious ways to deal with it is through filtering. You filter out the, the fluff and the noise and you, you make sure that you subscribe and paying attention to those who sort of come up with information that later turns out to be true or um, footage that is is definitely useful, that means something to you, that resonates, that's quality, right? Um, so I do think social media has been and is making some valuable contributions in this case, um, which can directly impact the outcome of this case. I also think that you could have a lot of people running around um, the area, maybe not right now, but in the fullness of time, and they could also take photos of things that they think are, are of interest. And, and um, that can be another resource for, um, for law enforcement further down the road. And something can come out of that, all of that footage. Um, I think Don and Candace's social media provides us with the most intimate self-portrait of the inside of that home. Um, in the same way that the, in the Chris Watts case, you had the inside of that home. And to some extent, the family dynamics in technicolor through through the volume of social media in that case and then we can also see the outside of these individuals um, the expressions what they're doing what they what substances they're using the whole environment that they're in what kind of people they are how they identify and this is far more detailed than any sketch artist in a courtroom could come up with and increasingly i'm certainly finding when i write books on um, certain cases I get so much detail through the self-disclosed social media than anywhere else. Um, in fact, the very first book I wrote um, was based on um, social media. The entire book was based on the social media. So when Lawson refers to stuff they've done many times already, it probably includes searching the property with cadaver dogs, extensive searches of the property and vehicles on the property, Forensic searches of the house, possibly also of the, of grandma's um, trailer or camper. Um, forensic examination of the cell phone data. All of that we know is happening. And, and then extensive statement analysis from all those polygraphs. Maybe they've searched the creek area and the area downstream already. If they have, well, I haven't seen too many photos of searches moving through the stream channel. Um, but they could also bring in animal behavior experts to look into the dogs at the Wells home to actually get a sense of how these dogs respond, actually get it on camera while those dogs are there, um, get a sense of their behavior and the local wildlife. What are the habits of snapping turtles and where is the nearest population? We've also seen Don constructing his home, some photos of that. 
Could there be any secret areas inside the home, walls or basement? And, you know, if you someone who's a former jailbird, you've been in prison, often they have little areas where they will hide away, um, you know, what do they call it? Um, it's got a specific name, but, you know, cigarettes and things like that, where, where they would hide things like that away. Well, wouldn't you want something like that in your home if you're going to, if you know you're going to be um, pursuing certain kinds of activities and behaviors. In the Gannon store case, there was a lot of searching going on and some of the best information they found was in the basement of the stork home. Something, some things that they overlooked right in the beginning, when they looked a lot closer, they found it right there inside the home. The same thing with the McCann case. To some extent, the same thing with the Ramsey case. All right, I'm not going to take it further than that. I know there are other shows coming up on other channels. So let's keep it clean and let's not tolerate rumors and rumor mongers or something like that. And let's leave law enforcement to do their job. Okay, thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.